Hello and welcome to the kitchen table. It's Alison Southern here from Meltram Team Ministry. It's good to join again over the airways and you are indeed always welcome at my kitchen table. This week has been a difficult week as we have reached that grim milestone of 100,000 deaths due to COVID and more than 100,000 too. It's so hard, isn't it, to think about numbers on such a scale as individuals, but that's exactly what those numbers represent. Men and women, young and old, children too, each one taken by the virus that has come to be such a killer across our entire world. It's hard to come to the table and be positive when there is such a level of grief throughout our land. Indeed, Derek and I were out on an essential journey the other day and as we were out, we were commenting that it was like a ghost town. The stillness of the streets, no hustle and bustle, no chitting and chatting, just people with heads down, masks on, going about their business, but in very low numbers, which is a good thing. We are in lockdown and that's what we need to be doing. But it prompted a conversation between us as we were driving back home about just the amazing state we find ourselves in, that something that is so tiny that isn't even visible to the eye can lay a world onto its knees, can cause death on such a scale, can be the, the destruction of businesses that have been enduring for generations, that can be the factor that influences so many different disruptions in our world. Our conversation went on from that point into the fact that in our world history shows that there have been many times when huge numbers of people have been lost. Today is Holocaust Day, a day when the world remembers the deaths of over six million Jews in the camps. The deaths too, not just of those Jews, but of other people too. Gypsies, people who were different, those who loved people of their same sex. I'm told redheads were also targeted. But so many were murdered because they weren't what somebody thought was perfection. The Holocaust brings such pain and sadness to so many families who lost loved ones and generations remember. Of course, the Holocaust in all its pain and destruction, you would have hoped would have been the last event that allowed genocide on that scale. Of course, the scale was so huge but the harsh reality is that we still experience that in our world today. There's Rwanda, Darfur, Bosnia, so many different places and so many places still today where it matters where you come from, whose people you are, as to how you will be treated. Whether you are gathered up and placed into refugee camps, whether you are targeted by not being given support, love, respect or care. I just listened to a, an article on the radio and they were talking about the death camps during World War II and the fact that actually in many of those death camps women were working too, they were the guards. The conversation was going on about how they weren't brought to justice in the same way as the men who had worked in those camps. And the question was asked, well, were they monsters or were they just ordinary people doing monstrous things? 
we're all capable of allowing terrible things to happen in our world and in our societies. It sometimes just takes somebody to step up and say, whoa, what's happening? Don't do this in my name for things to begin to change. And peace talks around the world in all sorts of different conflicts have come about by people doing just that. Often by women actually standing up and saying, no more of this, no more of this. Back here in our country today, with the death toll still rising, which it will continue to do for another couple of weeks, we are told, and each loss being felt just as keenly as the first loss, you and I are able to help in tiny ways by staying in and only going out for essential journeys, by washing our hands, keeping our faces covered, keeping our distance. So many of us do that. But for some of us, this is feeling like a very long haul. And I know that I speak to people who have just want to break free, want to do what they would like to do, are desperate to live life to their fullest. Brothers and sisters, we have to be patient and we have to fight a battle against this tiny virus that we cannot see. It's not an enemy at the gate that we can barricade ourselves against. This is a global pandemic that we are still going to have to endure for months yet, years possibly. And that means that we have to see that within each and every one of the situations I've been talking about today, it is my belief that we are accompanied by Christ. I believe that God was in the death camps alongside his people. I believe that God is with us as we go through this pandemic and I believe that the sting of death has been taken away by Jesus Christ and I know how hard that is to hear when you have lost someone and your pain is so intense but I do believe that Jesus dying on the cross and rising again was to take away the sting of death and to offer us hope in eternal life. Hope in a place where every tear will be wiped from every eye. And there'll be no more pain and no more suffering. It's a really hard thing to try and get your head round but I believe that promise is true and that you and I, wherever we sit, wherever we are in our lives, no matter how much we might be struggling personally, we are not abandoned by the God who loves us and that you and I can make a difference to somebody else who may be deeply, deeply hurting at the moment just by caring that little bit more, reaching out, speaking, offering to live our lives as we need to live them to care for each and every one of us. I was listening to someone from the World Health Organization the other day saying, only when this is beaten everywhere will this be beaten. That's how global this is, that's our reality. Every nation that will be fighting this virus at the same time needs to help each other. Whether that's about us sharing the resources of vaccines, whether it's about us making sure that it's not just us that are okay, but everyone that's okay. 
Those are such an important thing at the moment. If ever there was a time for us to love our neighbour, this is it. And our neighbour being global, being faceless people we will never meet. And yet we will love by moving close to getting rid of that virus by staying apart, by washing our hands, by covering our faces and by being patient. Loss is a horrible, horrible thing to experience. Loss in a time of Covid across this world has been even more keenly felt when we haven't been able to be with our loved ones, to say our goodbyes, to share in the grieving. But I believe there is hope. And I believe that we can bring comfort to one another. And I believe that God stays with us on every step of our journey. So on this Holocaust day, on this week with such a grim milestone, I still say to you to love one another as God asks us to love, to love yourself and be good to yourself and if times feel tough then reach out and let someone know you're struggling. And most of all I would encourage you to say a prayer. The Archbishops have asked for us all to stop from the 1st of February at 6 o'clock every day and just say a simple prayer offering to God all those affected by this pandemic. And tonight we are invited to put a candle in our window and to light it for Memorial Day for the Holocaust, remembering the millions that lost their lives and remembering the humanity that stops that happening again and again and again is with you and with me. We are the light in this world. So light a candle in your window tonight and shine and shine every day however you can by loving your neighbours near and far. Bye for now. I'll see you on Sunday. God bless.